1.1, the two factors of the commodity, use value and value. And then in quotes. Exchange value. Uh, uh, sorry, in value, yeah. Uh, substance of value, comma, magnitude of value. Uh, so he doesn't mention exchange value yet in the in the title. Um, so. The first, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first sentence is, is, is a banger. The wealth, of, the wealth of societies in which the capitalist mode of production prevails appears as an immense collection of commodities. The individual commodity appears in its elementary form. Our investigation, therefore, begins with the analysis of the commodity. So um, the first thing that he gets into is um, everything has a use. Um, and everything can look, be looked at from two points of view. There's quality and quantity. Um, and Wait, Mike, before, before use, yeah. wasn't there either a quote or something of um, talking about desire, where he's like, desire is a, is a um, part of the human uh, organism, just as thirst, or there's something about that. There's something in the very, very beginning um, about wants, you know, or, yeah. or wants and or desire, and in the satisfaction of such, you know. Right. Okay. Here it is. The nature of these needs, whether they arise, for example, from the stomach or the imagination, makes no difference. Mm. Is that is that what you meant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I thought that was an incredibly important part because sometimes when we think of use or utility, or yeah, the the, the, the use value of a thing, um, you know, we think of like, oh, you know, it can like do something, but the just the status the, the how do you call it? the satisfaction of the imagination you know is something right um yeah totally and he gets into yeah does he bring up use right after yeah so the usefulness of a thing makes it a use value um use values are realized use or consumption um and i think this is kind of where he ties it to this is like the natural form of something as opposed to like the um like the social form i don't know if he gets to that part just yet um so he establishes use value versus exchange value. Um, exchange value appears, first of all, as the quantitative relation, the proportion in which the use values of one kind exchange for use values of another kind. So the use value is the, I assume, the, the quality, whereas the exchange value would be the, the quantity. Uh, I might be jumping ahead, but anyway, uh, or I might be wrong on that. Um, so exchange value appears to be relative because it keeps changing. Um, and so it's not something that, um, yeah. So it's something that doesn't seem like Mike, you just broke up there for a sec. Oh, I was saying because exchange value changes, it's not essential to the thing itself. Like it's not, uh, yeah, it's not like imminent. Uh, whereas the use value is. I remember I was listening to, to I think it was a uh, C. Derek. Oh, what's time Erica Wieland were uh, talking about um, like the translation of capital and his work like from German and like how some there's some issues that have like kind of like telephone mm -hmm. uh, what we call like the Asiatic production or primitive accumulation is more or I think you know primitive accumulation is least stated as primal accumulation mm -hmm. not primitive yeah I haven't gotten to that chapter yet but uh, I wasn't quite sure what yeah primitive meant like historical. Yeah, or from like a primitive way. I mean, the thing is, there's still primitive com accumulation even in a civilized society. You know, it's not a mm -hmm. entirely separate. That's what Heinrich's uh, one of the chapters in Heinrich was talking about is that like Marx is not doing historical reading of capital, um, and so it's not like starting and like tracing the rise of capitalism, but rather um, looking. What is it? It's like looking at capitalism in a specific form but understanding like capitalism's totality from that is saying yeah i just i think it's important for us always like again which is why i don't i don't feel like it's always how to to say like memorize the exact things that are being said but more to see the picture um see the model that's being expressed mm -hmm. because you know there's there's i don't think anywhere is there even in our current you know capital world there's no like like capital isn't entirely um hegemonic in the sense that there's no other, or there's just like, say a platonic, here's a capital, there's no platonic capital society. It's a little more nebulous than that. Like it's, it's more like trends. There's like a general, like there's general ways, general like, there's a general sort of structure to it. Like just the idea, you know, is some um, use and exchange value. You know, like he says, you know, there's plenty of societies that have, um, you know, use value, but, or, or like have um, the production of useful goods, but because you don't have, mm -hmm. um, this idea of exchange of like equivalent exchange oh i see you can't really call it capital right know? right it's really yeah that actually kind of makes sense right because then you you could have like the isolated form of value or like the uh what is it the um what's before the general but you could have like the first couple of forms of value but not like money or um 
or like universal hmm. anyway i'm sorry that's jumping ahead um okay yeah, I'm, actually now that i'm thinking about it i mean you always have a sort of i guess the, the most one of them it's a in terms of the market is you know like thinking about like our commodity market is the sort of um nominalization you know so like um say like you know when they're talking about you know he's talking about yards of linen, 10 yards of linen to one coat or 20 yards mm -hmm. something like that there, there's there's a you know a coat is expressed is valued at 20 yards of linen 20 yards of linen are valued at one coat you know like mm -hmm. you you express the value um the value of one is expressed relative to the other mm -hmm. yeah i mean we're jumping ahead here which maybe you don't want to do but um that's okay in a certain sense to have that you you need to have a, a very general sense of one coat right yeah i think that's the isolated form of value or sorry you have to have a general sense oh no no no, no. you know what it is though is it's the use value of the coat is what gives the relative form its value. So if I say 20 yards of linen equals one coat, um, it's not the exchange value of the coat that gives the uh, linen its exchange value. It's the use value of the coat that gives the linen its exchange. Well, isn't the point that use value, how do you call it? Exchange value is determined by socially necessary or labor time, right? Required uh, to produce each. That's the use value, not the exchange value, I think. Uh, use really? I thought that was exchange value. In, let's see, yeah, this is in 1.1. 1, 1. 1. Let me grab it. Use values are only realized in use or consumption. Yeah. They constitute the material content of wealth, whatever its social form may be. In the form of society to be considered here, they also have material bearers. They are, sorry, they are also the, the material bearers of exchange value. So, I mean, I, the way I take use value, exchange value, you know, I mean, you need something because you have a use of, but the exchange value, like what, how they actually relate to each other is exchange value and determined based on the, how do you call it, the labor time mm -hmm. to produce it, socially necessary, socially relative. I, mean, I guess he says, so. right. but because essentially if you can produce a, well, I mean, first the coat needs a certain amount of linen, you know, as there's a certain amount of linen within it, but then it also requires more labor to assemble it into, to turn that linen into a coat, right? Yeah. You know what? I think you're right. I'm, I misunderstood. Yeah, because the, the magnitude of the use value would be its utility, right? Not the labor time required to produce it. Yeah. No, I don't, but hold up though. Because doesn't ex the exchange value of something... Oh, uh, huh. Because I, I basically been thinking of value and exchange value as the same. Isn't that kind of his argument here? Is that... Is this, what? I mean, that's a, that's essentially, yeah, I, I think that's essentially Marx is that use value is secondary, or how do you call it? Use value is not like price. You know, I think uh, he, he hasn't even gotten to the money commodity yet. Right, right. Yeah, no, no, no. I think the key thing when we think of value in a, in a capitalist mode is, is the price. What's the price of the commodity? No, but then if that were the case, though, if it were the case that socially necessary labor time is what produces ex is, is exchange value, then you wouldn't have to have exchange because you can have the production of, of the commodity without exchanging it. Well, then you're not capital. Or, but I'm, I'm saying is exchange value only comes out during exchange, but just the amount of socially necessary labor time does not uh, also include the act of exchange. Um, and I think that we get the exchange value from this whole thing of like placing the other commodity, at least in the isolated form, into the equivalent form. And then that gives the exchange value to the relative form. So if I say 20 yards of linen, uh, its, its value is one coat. Um, that's determined by what it's exchanged for and not by the amount of socially necessary labor time that went into making the linen, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I, the point he makes um, is either in 1.1 one, one or 2 is that the thing that determines their relative value to each other you know, and what they will exchange for relative to each other. Actually, I got to be honest, I didn't quite understand what the point he was making and the difference between relative and equivalent. I would probably need to go back. I think it's um, that the equivalent form provide is what provides the exchange value for the relative form, but it doesn't work the other way and like it doesn't provide the value for itself so like 20 yards of linen equals one coat provides the exchange value of the 20 yards of linen and does not speak to the exchange value in any way okay wait so that's relative or equal in that case the uh 20 yards of linen is in the relative form and the coat is in the equivalent oh okay this is like one like the commodity you have i guess it's like 
Yeah, that was the thing. You, I mean, I, obviously, I get it's pointless to say one coat is worth one coat, right? Like, right. Because that's just, like, tautological. You know, the value of one coat is the value of one coat. Um, yeah, okay, I can... I, I, I guess so, so it's essentially the, the commodity in hand, you know, is you would say, oh, it's worth this other, you know, X of this some other commodity, right? So mm -hmm. the one you have is equivalent to the other than the other's relative to that? Is it kind of like a direction, you know, in the... It is, equal yeah, it is direction. Terms? Is it direct the direction which points in which way? Yeah. Yeah, so it's relative is left-hand side and equivalent is right-hand side. Okay. Um, I can read, let me read a, a paragraph from Heinrich who covers this. Mm -hmm. Please, please. <clears throat> the value of the linen is expressed and the coat serves as a mean of expressing the value of the linen. This is, this is in response to the 20 yards of linen equals one coat equation. Mm. Uh, both commodities thus play completely different roles in the form of expression of value and Marx assigns different terms to these roles. The value of the first commodity, linen, is expressed as relative value, meaning in relation to something else. This commodity is in the relative form of value. The second commodity, the coat, serves as an equivalent for the value of the first commodity. It is in the equivalent form of value. In, the sim in this simple expression of value, only the value of one commodity can be expressed at any given time. Only the value mm. of the linen is expressed as a specific quantity of coat. The value of the coat, on the other hand, is not expressed. However, the expression of value, 20 yards of linen, are worth one coat does also imply the reverse, one coat is worth 20 yards of linen. Now, the coat is in the relative form of value and the linen is in, um, mm. yeah. Okay. But I guess I still, I guess I'm still missing where the socially necessary uh, lever time comes. Or he said it specifically, like, um, like I know it's in 1.1, but I feel like at this point we're in 1.3 and then I don't think he's there. Yeah, 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 let's let's backtrack to it. Um, okay, so he's um, first he's saying, you know, that things relate, you know, in a certain ratio. Um, it's around in here. Uh, so a simple geometrical example will illustrate in order to determine and compare the areas of all rectal figures, we split them into triangles. And the triangle itself is reduced to an expression totally different from its visible shape. Half the product of the base is the altitude, but like height, the height. Um, in the same way, the exchange values of these must be reduced to a common element of which they represent a greater and less. This common element cannot be geometrical, physical, chemical, or other natural property of co Such properties come into consideration only to the extent they make the commodities useful, i.e. turn them into use value. But clearly, the exchange relation of is characterized precisely by action. Within the exchange relation, one use value is worth just as much as another, provided only that it is present in the appropriate. Or as old Barbon says, one sort of wares or good as the value be equal. There is no difference or distinction, distinction in things of equal value. Uh, 100 pounds worth of lead or iron is as great as of as great a value as 100 pounds worth of silver and gold. As use value commodities above all in quality, exchange value, sorry, as use value commodities differ above all in quality, while as exchange values therefore do not contain an atom of use. If we then disregard the use value, only one that being products of labor, but even the product of labor already been trans. If we make abstraction from its use value, we abstract also from material constituents make it a use. It is no longer a table, a piece of yarn, or any other useful thing. All its sensuous characteristic wish, nor is it any longer the, the labor of the joiner, the mason, or the, any other particular kind of productive labor. The disappearance of the useful characteristics of labor, the useful characteristics kinds of also just this in turn entails the dis different concrete forms of labor. They can no longer be distinguished, but are altogether reduced to the same labor. Human labor, so that's, that. I mean, that right there, I feel the core of his point. I mean, of course, he then goes on to like socially nary, but just in the sense that it all becomes, it all is reduced to act human. Right, okay, like yeah. Says, it's not even just the, sorry, what's that? Oh yeah, no, no, go on. Uh, I was just gonna say that essentially every, like that's the thing, like use value disappears. Like the the, right. the actual physical everything that, you know, disappears in exchange. And what's also interesting is the quality of labor itself, you know, everything. Um, mm -hmm. Right, it turns into abstract, I, it turns into abstract labor. Yeah, And so but, I mean, I, I I, I would say there's a lot to potentially contend here because he does not in any way before this he really doesn't like if this is in a certain it almost feels like this is the conclusion being presented yeah yeah because does he talk about real and abstract la labor i feel like that's later um oh yeah no he goes more into labor which is then where he starts getting into oh like, yeah there it is talking about two. exchange values and you know you would say one commodities i feel like it's right here that he says them important to the point he's making yeah about the commodity so let me value. let me try to repeat it back to you to see if to make sure that i understand um so like i was kind of struggling with like the difference between value and exchange value and 
the relation of socially necessary labor time to exchange value. And as I guess I understand it, the, the socially necessary labor time for the production of a commodity, like how much time you labor to put into it, um, gives it its value. But then in the act of exchange, that real labor becomes abstracted um, or turns into abstract labor. And I, I think Heinrich says it well, it's like only in the act of exchange does the individual producer find out to what extent his individually expended labor time corresponds to the socially necessary labor time. Um, yeah. And so that congeals the value as the exchange value of the in like in the act of turning concrete labor into abstract that that turns value into and this only takes place during the abstract chain yeah okay cool yeah i mean the, or the, the way i read it is yeah essentially val exchange value i mean i guess the, the, the main thing about exchange value, i think we need to think on a scope and it goes beyond say individual i mean don't get me wrong there are individual people i think i think it's more of a general you know of yeah i mean because it, it changes over oh sorry you, know, you like said so, socially prodded, necessary Socially necessary labor time? Or I just mean, uh, no, mm-hmm. um, the exchange value. Mm-hmm. The exchange value varies, mm-hmm. or, or, you know, what he yeah. call it. It's so, it's so hard for me to think in exactly his terms. Well, because it, isn't it because... Whenever he's talking about these things, I'm thinking about ours as we use... Yeah. You know, because of our our brain is, you know, wired around our money commodity, which is, is it the, the relative? Okay, well, dude, this is my question. Relative this is what form? I, this is what I don't understand about how money is a commodity is what labor went into producing money. Like, what is the use value of money? And if the use value of money is its exchange value, then it doesn't have this twofold nature that commodities are supposed to have. So how is money a commodity? No, no well, here's, the, I think money, money's a special commodity, right? Because the, the, when I, when I read all, all, you know, when he was talking about this um, commodity is equivalent to this commodity, <coughs> right? Mm-hmm. Shit. I, I gotta be honest. Yeah, I gotta that, go back and that, that, remember, that. distinguish the equivalent. Yeah, no, no, um, no, you got it. Well, well, so it'd be, I was just thinking, well, that's certainly not how we do it. Right. Like in, in our lives, it's like, no, this commodity is right. Mm-hmm. The dollars is a, but then the other thing, then you could, if you, then you could, you know, on the other side that a, another commodity is X or Y doll, right? And so essentially the, the value of the two things can't, are just now separated. Like you just have this in the middle, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause they're I mean, universally, it's, it's, dollars it's, are only, what's up? Yeah. It's universally exchanged and you don't exchange dollars for dollars or sorry, maybe I missed Actually, that's a. That is actually a funny thing. You kind of do you remember? Actually, this was a little aside. There was a SNL sketch. I feel like I forget what it was. It was like a bank. Um, it was like ta- it was like a joke on like a liquidation sale, but it was um it was a it was like an ad like hey here's our store you know we're going out of business we got to liquidate people mm-hmm. and it was like a bank doing it yeah and it was like five thousand dollars for the cheap price of three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It was oh it's fucking incredible, but. You know, like that's, but the thing is, there's a lot of paper assets, you know, that are kind of, there is actually uh, that going on in, in asset market. Yeah. Like I really, I, I don't know any, nearly enough about Marx and currency exchange. I actually feel like he'd probably cover that at some point, right? Uh, Maybe. I mean, I know he eventually gets into the commodity. Um, I feel like Marx is much more focused on social, sort of the social, um, because the, the key point I think of marx is it's not just commodities moving around but rather like yeah the relations the people side the social side mm-hmm. right you know and specifically the the capitalist in the worker side mm-hmm. you know and how how the mode of commodity production uh separates the two mm-hmm. um and separates everyone within um but yeah no i just it how do you call it um I, I think there's better work not done by on actual like finance capital, you know, because in like one sense, like uh, how banks lend to each other, mm-hmm. you know, and like how banks value, I guess interest is a weird thing, you know, like, oh, well, I'm giving you money in a certain sense, money exchanges for money over time, you know, like across time. It's not like, hey, I'll give you $3, $5, you know, but like, I'll give you three for it later. Okay. Well, I guess I you might know? have been mistaken. I just thought the the money form or even even before that the general form is that um something is exchangeable for except itself let me find uh, well it has value its value can only be ex- in its exchange value with commodity i don't know i don't want to i guess i don't want to but yeah i mean like he does talk you know say um say you lose like say like 
you know, farmers lose like half or whatever, you know, so that, I mean, in, in, a, in a sense, you know, you put the same amount of labor in, I mean, you, you very often, we don't talk in the Marxist way in English, you know, we'd say, oh, like supply and demand, you know, change. Um, he's just saying essentially kind of like potentially a different way of looking supply and demand um, and saying that, yeah, value the, it'll, yeah, shift based on, you know, the, the hour into it or human, human hour. Oh, yeah. To be, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, jump in. Yeah, I was going to say I found the, the quote that I was looking for about why, like, mm. so if, if, let's say, gold is, like, money, uh, it's universally exchangeable for anything except itself. I say this because um, the commodity that figures as universal equivalent, or sorry, let me back up. A single commodity, therefore, has the form of direct exchangeability with all other commodities. In other words, it has a directly social form because, and insofar as, no other commodity is in this situation. The commodity that figures as universal equivalent is, on the other hand, excluded from the uniform and therefore a universal relative form of value. Uh, if the linen or any other commodity serving as universal equivalent, so in this case gold, were at the same time to share in the relative form of value, it would have to serve as its own equivalent. We would then have 20 yards of linen equals 20 yards of linen, a tautology in which neither the value nor its magnitude is expressed. So it's basically saying is like, for money, that, like gold, for instance, sits on the right-hand side as the equivalent form and anything can sit on the left hand side as the relative form except for gold but um mm -hmm. i and i don't say that to like uh argue against what you're saying with uh exchanging money for itself but um we definitely I, I don't know if we've gotten i was just trying to sort of clarify like what i was getting at with the uh exclusionary thing but yeah um, yeah no i mean for in in the way that he's saying things yeah i mean the the money commodity is that everything else is valued at but in it, uh, what I see it as is a certain, how do you call it? It's like a veil mm -hmm. that hides the, or, or removes by one, um, I guess, abstract, um, the commodities relation to each other away, mm -hmm. right? By turning them into a price? By turning value into price? Yeah, yeah. Though, I gotta be honest, there's, I know I've heard that there's a lot of talks about value is not price, you know? Or there's other things that go into price that are not yeah. value. Yeah, like uniqueness. Uh, I actually, there's a good, Heinrich has a good quote on this if you want it. <clears throat> go, go. Um, so it should be noted that the labor theory of value only explains the value of products of labor. Things that are not products of labor do not possess a value. If they're exchanged, they have an exchange value or price, but no value. And this exchange value has to then be explained separately, which Marx does in volume three of Capital. Um, so a work of art is a product of, oh, and I think this is a counterpoint, or it's a response to uh, so I might not, mm. um, but it, it's, oh, no, no, bring it up. I am actually into, um, okay. So the, the first thing that I just said on things that have a price, but no labor would be one of the obvious objections to the, the labor theory of value that existed during Marx's time. What, so for example, uh, like Virgin has a price, does not have a value. Um, and then the, oh yeah, yeah. All the works of actually, yeah, that was an, inter there's one part where, you know, he talks about, yeah, all the kind of natural thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like like the silkworm. Yeah, soil. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten to that yet. I, he hasn't gotten the land, but yeah, I mean, that would make mm. sense. And then the other thing that that critiques the labor theory of value are certain products of labor. Or I'm sorry, this is not a response to the labor theory of value. This is I guess it is. Uh, there's certain products of labor, such as works of art, whose exchange value is completely independent of the labor time expended for their production. So then, to the second point, a work of art is a product of labor. But unlike normal commodities, a unique object, something that only exists once, the price that a buyer is prepared to pay for it is a collector's price, which hasn't the slightest to do with the labor expended by the artist. However, most economic products are not unique, but rather mass-produced goods, and it is the value of those goods that should... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the, the real issue there is, yes. Art is, uh, is it not a commodity? Because it doesn't have a use value, Yeah, because it's right? singular. Oh, well, the, the main issue is completely singular. It's it's unique. Well, are, do, are commodities necessary, necessarily mass-produced? I just thought commodities are uh, things that can be exchanged, or is it things that I, require... I base? assume... Because, like, services are a commodity, right? But that's not... Uh, there hasn't been production yet. The production and consumption takes place at the same time after the purchase of the commodity. I gotta be honest, I'm really sure if Marty's commodity... In the in the sense of like the way that it's exchanged in the market. Okay. Well, because you know, like he talks about shit. And I forget where he talked being like within within the factory. You don't term an individual exchange. Right. There's labor, but there's right. no exchange in a factory. Yeah. So there's a division of labor as well, and I think I think you need division of not just labor for a commodity. Let's see. Well, 
I mean, it needs to be like, I guess it exchangeable in a common, so like, like commonly exchange. I, I, I just, yeah. Commodities to me always seem like in a general sense, like you don't talk about again. No, like, I, oh, sorry. Specific. Yeah. It's not like the damn. Um, I, I think you're right that the frequency of exchange matters, but I think what it matters mm. for is the commodities form of value and not the, whether or not it's a commodity. So for instance, if there's very infrequent exchange, then you get the, the isolated form of value. If there's, um, if exchange is pretty common, then you get the, uh, yeah. sorry, I'm just get my notes. You get um, the expanded form of value. And then in like the world of exchange, that's where you get the general form of value, where everything is like universally exchangeable. But I think in all three of those cases, you still have commodity, um, is my understanding. Is like whether or not it's a commodity, it does not depend on, um, oh, what's the way to phrase it? Maybe, yeah, yeah, like maybe like mode of exchange, I don't know. Um, but I do have a, a quote guess, on services, but yeah, I'm sorry, go on about um, commodities. I don't know, I guess, I guess I would say, I guess that's probably, that is things sold and have use, but aren't necessarily a mass commodity produce. But I guess the majority of exchange mm -hmm. Yeah. In a cap in the yeah. capitalist yeah. system. Right. Industries right. Are right. Sort of bulk. And yeah. I don't think Marx has gotten to capitalism. Like he talks about yeah. in yeah. capitalism, it pro what is it? Capitalism appears as like a collection of commodities. So he begins his analysis with the commodity. But from here, yeah. I don't think we certainly haven't gotten to capital. And I don't think that yeah. But you're I think you're right uh, in in that like yeah, in capitalist societies, commodities are mass produced and universally exchanged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um yeah. and then for services Heinrich says, um, up until now, one might have had the impression that when the term commodity is used, it refers solely to physical objects. But what is relevant here is the act of exchange, not the fact that physical objects are being exchanged. Services can also be exchanged and therefore become commodities. The difference between a material product and an immaterial service consists solely of a different temporal relationship between production and consumption. The material, pr uh, the material product is first produced and subsequently consumed. Um, in the case of a service, whether we're talking about a taxi ride, a massage, a performance, the act of production is concurrent with the act of consumption. As the taxi driver mm. produces a change of place, I consume it. Uh, the difference between services and physical objects consists of a di distinction of the material content. The question as to whether they are commodities pertains to their social form, and that mm. depends upon whether objects and services. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, you, I, you I think services. Still have, you do still have exchange labor time. Yeah, it just it's the difference is just when the the labor takes place. Mm. Um, yeah, actually, one thing that's interesting in terms of uh, how, how we sell ourselves and just thinking about labor, you know, like when we think about the, the labor time of a commodity, you know, uh, or the labor time production of a commodity that would be exchanged, um, you know, you can usually break that down, you know, hours of labor, you know, how many, how many man hours do you need, right? Mm -hmm. But um, certain certain services, like I was just thinking about Azure, um, I was talking earlier about a PT friend, a family who's been having it rough, you know, but there's certain certain services need um, time invested in, like, think especially like medical, you know, there's a lot of time required just to be able to perform the service, right? And so you need that, how do you call it? You have to charge more mm -hmm. for your service mm -hmm. and usually can, mm -hmm. as not as many people are willing time required. Hmm. So you're not not just the time of the service itself, but this the time the job training. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, education. Education takes a lot, of, um, and you're not you're not getting your value if you charge. Uh, okay, well, cool. I feel like we covered one point one, um, hmm. and I feel like we probably got one point two as well, right? Yeah, we're kind of all in. The one thing that we haven't gotten to is commodity. The dual character of labor. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we. Yeah, I mean, we sort of touched on that where. At, uh, con like concrete labor turns into uh, abstract in the process. But um, do you want to cover that? Because uh, you probably are, have a better understanding of it. Oh, so that was, I mean, was this essentially first how, I guess, reading off the beginning of it, uh, initially the commodity appeared to object with dual character, use and exchange. Later on, it was seen that labor too has a dual character. Insofar as it finds expression in value, it no longer possesses the same characteristic as when it is the creator of use value. It was first to point out and examine critically this twofold nature of labor contained in commodity. As this point is crucial to an understanding of political economy, it requires further elucidation. <laughs> yeah. Let us take two commodities, such as a coat and 10 yards of linen, and let the value of the first be twice that, so that if 10 yards of linen equals W and the coat E2W, the coat is a use value that's the coat to, um, wait, so that would, that means the coat would be 10, 20 yards. Yeah, I think, yeah, he, get, he, he gets to that once we get, 
the isolated form of value. Yeah, I'll be honest. I get it drives me insane. <laughs> the uh, I've spent so much of my educational defining equation. I'm like, why is it ten yards of linen and not one yard? Yeah. Then we can say yards of linen, like one yard of linen equals W. The coat equals twenty. Duh, right. Uh, why is the nominal uh, oh, dimension of linen yeah. of the linen commodity ten yards? Why can't it be uh, one yard? Well, because isn't <laughs> one right. isn't one yard of linen worth like one twentieth of a coat? Yeah. Oh, well, essentially, yes. So he wouldn't he wouldn't do that because what is what is one twentieth of a coat? Who wants to buy that? That doesn't have a lot of value. Yeah. Well, ten yards of linen's a half a coat. That's uh, just as useless. I mean, half a yeah. I yeah. mean, if anything, I'd rather be. Let's talk about the coats. You know why? <laughs> Fuck this linen shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It's just funny. That that was just the thing to me. You know, like, the, and I assume this this actually probably makes you probably in his day maybe yards of linen and yards of linen, yeah. You know. I mean, Nowadays you know, it's like uh, four. What's no. up? Uh, I was making a joke. I was like, nowadays it's like four. Oh, four. <laughs> four yards of linen to two coats. Yeah, I gotta half a coat. <laughs> I gotta check the ticker. It's been a while. Oh man. Yeah. Have you ever Have you ever gone shopping for the yard? No. There's too many choices. Yeah. I, I I almost wish there was just here's your linen, here's your silk, you know. But oh my, the different brand, the color. Oh man, this know, is like red count. First world problems to the extreme. <laughs> oh, for real, man. Shit, I. Actually... Yeah, I feel like here it gets back to use value and not like useful labor. I mean, it obviously is it right. I don't think this well, is. Well, this is kind of uh, where you were getting shit labor as the father. Well, I mean, it's kind of getting into the sense of, okay, yeah, tailoring versus weaving. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in a certain sense, isn't the, the point he's making in this is that, you know, it all kind of reduces the time? Um, yeah, like a- abstract labor time. Yeah. Uh, the simple yeah. average labor. And it's it the, ma- the magnet. That's the value. Countries. That's the value and the magnitude oh. would be at start its time. Wait, sorry, is this where he gets into social necessary or I just remember, you know, because it varies in, in time and place, you know, like no, things change. Yeah. I mean he brings up socially necessary labor time in one point one, but I think simple average labor is the same. Because isn't it the average, you know, for like the level of skill in that country in or that society? Like it's an it's an average. It's not a and that's socially necessary as Oh, by the way, Mike, I I broke off there. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't say anything. No, sorry, but- <laughs> well, I, I'm curious uh, what your thoughts are on social area, labor time, or if Heinrich had more say. I have an idea of what it, what it is, but I'm not entirely sure. I have it down in my notes that socially lab- so- socially necessary labor time is the average amount of time required to produce something. Okay. So it's it yeah it's like an average of of a society. I guess I was just trying to think about how does that uh, what are the sort of inputs to socially necessary like what varies. Uh, well, technology. Is it just Harvey. I remember Harvey saying when Harvey was talking about social socially necessary labor time as like what um, it was more more like what your needs are like how much how much time you need to reproduce your to, to reproduce yourself sort of so it's, it was more like or to reproduce your social existence I don't um, think that's socially necessary labor time okay yeah that's the thing I wasn't it seemed different from uh, I'm not sure where yeah maybe I can, I'm, I'm I can get Heinrich remembering on. Harvey. Yeah, I'm sure Heinrich has this as well. I'll pull, pull a quote. I have. I am reading Harvey as well, but I'm. I haven't picked it up in there, so I can. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm curious. I just remember. I think it was Harvey was talking about. So, like, like one aspect of say an earlier society was like with women doing a lot of unpaid work or unpaid labor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in terms of like home maintenance, cooking, cleaning, um, potentially doing like home agriculture. You know. Say pure for, purely for the family. You know, Harvey was making the that you know ne- socially necessary socially necessary labor time had more to do with like how many hours you need to work, hours a laborer um, needs to work to get the necessary commodities for their life. So it was more like a political. It had a more you know political uh, economic sort of um, bent to it. But it seems like Marx and I'm guessing Heinrich more like uh, what it, it has a lot of uh, more implications about like technological ability, right? So like machines reduce socially necessary labor time. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, sorry, I'm like... allowing the same say commodity production to happen and with the use of like half or even less. I forget if it was here. He mentions like the uh, machine mills. Okay, here we go. Took forever. Uh, the extent to which individually expended labor time counts as value creating labor depends, among other things, upon whether the socially necessary labor time, that is, the labor time necessary at a specific socially conventional level of the productivity and intensity of labor, was expended or not. If, for example, the socially, ne- if for example, 
the socially necessary labor time required for the production of a type of table is 10 hours, and if a particular person produces it in 8 hours, then he has produced the same value in 8 hours that other producers do in 10. He can therefore sell a product of 8 hours of labor as if it was the product of 10 hours of labor. Um, and then this is, I guess, the role of the capitalist, but I think I've, I jumped ahead just to steal the definition of social. Oh, no, no, go, time. go, the role of the oh, capitalist. No, 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 I'm, I'm like, I don't want to jump ahead to where I am in uh, in capital, so I, I'm well, going to... let me, let me fill in where I think this goes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. role of the capitalist is to be the one doing it, uh, something that everyone else does in 10 hours in eight hours. He's right? the one, to, he's the one to what? To do in eight hours what every, what others do in 10. I guess it's this, I guess it's the capitalist is the one who pays that person for the eight hour version of it and then sells it oh, for the 10 yeah. hour version and keeps the surplus <laughs> okay. value. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that, I guess that's a better way. Yeah. 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 And then all the other capitalists figure out how to get someone to do it in eight and then uh, you got to find someone to do it in. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and then, then so just it is eight. over time, technology will, and I, maybe other forces will uh, increase productivity and drive down the amount of socially necessary labor time required for a particular commodity. Um, mm. And so I guess people's labor becomes worth, people's, hmm, yeah, how does that work? It's like, maybe there's well, less of a... Decline. Yeah, right? okay. I guess there's That's less the surplus value part. because technology increases productivity. Mm. I, 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 don't, I haven't gotten to uh, the tendency of the, what is it, rate of... Profit to decline. decline. Yeah, but I guess maybe that's too far off. I was gonna say the one, the the only thing that we haven't gotten to is commodity fetishism. So maybe that's where we should, where we should yeah. go now. I gotta be honest. I'm I'm really curious your thought because. Yeah, I read um, this. I read this about six months ago. So I'm gonna go a lot hmm. from memory. I have some very sparse notes, but I'll I'll give it a shot. Well, the key, what key phrase? The uh, social relationship object becomes material. Um, relations, the social relation between things becomes the material relation people, right? Yeah, it's like to Zizek, it's an inversion. Um, but maybe we shouldn't talk about Zizek. Um, but yeah, that's right. It's we mistake we mistake uh, things for having relations with each other as stand-ins for people uh, having relations. Um, mm. Is that yeah? That's right, right? Like we think that things have a relationship with each other because, oh, and then the reason the secret of the commodity is that we is that commodities encapsulate. The social relations that produce them and that is why um yeah i guess that's why we why we see that or we just we fail to see the social relations encapsulated in the, in the commodity yeah well that was it <laughs> that's about all i remember from that from that section uh, i guess i was just curious i mean is it just kind of a play on words you know the social relationship i mean the fact that commodities are social <laughs> it just seemed a little like it seemed out of place like i guess like you said it's an inversion uh, sorry, what was the what, what were you curious about? Oh, well, it's like you would think that commodities would be the ones with material relations, be uh, the ones with uh, social relate, you know, the social has to do with human. Yeah, and I don't know. It's strange I, to say. I feel like that's the maybe the price we pay by like having abstract thought is that we kind of like do this displacement. Like we, we know that things have relations with each other, but we're not, we sort of mistake what the things themselves are. Um, I think it was like, maybe it was Heinrich or I don't think it was Marx himself was saying that like Marx really drives home that um, society is not a collection of individuals, it's a collection of relations or it's a collection of mm. relations um, where it's like, you know, if you have a an army or something, yeah, here it is um, so if like, if soldier A is commanded by Staff Sergeant B, then A is subordinate and B is superior. The property mm. of being a subordinate or a superior arises from the specific relationship between A and B within a military hierarchy but are not inherent to them as people outside of this hierarchy. In the case of value, a property that only exists within a relationship appears to be an objective property that is also inherent outside of this relationship. If we attempt to locate this quote-unquote objectivity outside of the exchange relationship, it eludes our grasp. The objectivity of value is quite literally a spectral objectivity. Um, mm, yeah. But I, I, yeah, it reminds me of the, um, or I was just thinking about what is it, Kierkegaard, the what is the self, you know, is a relating relation. <laughs> It relates itself in itself. Is that uh, between, you... between finite and infinite? Is that from either? Or? No, there was sickness unto death. I oh, think. okay, um, yeah, I haven't read that. Um, yeah, despairing relation. I mean, it it makes sense too that Marx sees it that way because I think dialectics doesn't really treat things as like first class citizens. Instead, it has like processes and relationships um, and like change. Like things are constantly changing. So mm. the idea of like a static definition of a thing uh, fails to account for for this constant change. So like instead, dialectics looks at 
relations and how those change over time um and like what that tells us about um the yeah. things involved yeah i remember um i always i, I remember i um exchange I, this is a, not exactly the capital exchange but our capital exchange of commodities but um like i i guess actually it is technical uh i remember um trading basketball cards as a kid mm-hmm and I remember I um I made a bad trade because of like social uh, pressure, you know, it was kind of peer pressured. Like I was just and didn't know how to like say no, you know, when someone was like forcing a trade. Yeah. And yeah. um yeah. I remember my mom went and got like took me to the store and bought the Beckett. You know, it's like the price guide. Mm-hmm. I just remember it was kind of like, which is I remember thinking how odd it was because it was like here's this here's this guide that says like this card of this year um is worth you know essentially this much addition mm-hmm. you know so say you have a mint card it's worth this say it's good it's worth a little less you know and i was just and I, it was always like some like 2.32 you know like yeah two dollars and 32 cents something right like that. right and for there was a time where i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna like learn the price value of all my cards and I just, it, it's sort of ridiculous, but like what that actually was, like as I, as I later kind of figured out was it was just sort of a, what are they exchanging for mm-hmm. in a sort of average sense? Yeah. Cause you traded it for a card, but this is dealing with it in terms of money. Yeah. But it's also, you can't really, or the, the, the exact value you're going to, or the exact um, price you're going to get for it for something to be different. You know, it's, it's, there's going to be individual variations, you know, when the, how do you call it, when you're tracking things in bulk you know, you get um, sort of a different picture. I just remember thinking, um, or just the idea that it is actually worth this, worth some dollars, you know, is just ludicrous. Right. So I was just thinking about the the, the, the sort of idea of like concrete value. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, I mean, in a certain sense, the, the real value is, you know, what actually comes out in the exchange. Yeah, right. And so, yes, yeah, you don't, um, yeah, I was just reading Heinrich's take on, on commodity fetishism. I think it's pretty pretty concise. But he says that, yeah, producers or people under the conditions of commodity production, producers do not relate to one another in a direct social way. So when there's a division of labor, uh, we don't directly relate to each other. Um, we first enter into a relationship during the act of exchange. Uh, hold up. Sorry, let me let me back up. Um, you know, I'm just going to read the, mar- the quote from Marx. Or sorry, what? Yeah, go so uh, the mysterious character of the commodity form consists therefore simply in the fact that the commodity reflects the social characteristics of men's own labor as objective characteristics of the products of labor themselves as the socio-natural properties of these things. Hence, it also reflects the social relation of the producers to the sum total of labor as a social relation which exists apart from and outside the producers. So Heinrich says here, in every social form of production characterized by a division of labor, people stand in a particular social relationship to one another. In commodity production, this social relationship between people appears as a relationship between things. It is no longer people who stand in a specific relationship with one another, but commodity. Um, so I'm just trying to remember if this is talking about, so like, let's say you have in a factory, you know, four different areas and you have like a worker in each one. Is it when I buy that commodity, I am buying that division. Um, like I'm buying that social relation in the commodity itself, mm. I think is what it's saying. Um, well, but more important, how you got your money. I mean, because yeah. the money just stands in for the relation commodity, right? Oh, but your money. Oh, okay. So really, I'm. I mean, because oh. you, your money is also. Oh, it, uh, got it, got it, got it, got it. So it's I'm relating to those factory workers by purchasing their product, and the money that I give is a stand-in for like whatever commodity I would be giving to them. That's a product of my labor. So in that way, whatever your whatever you're producing yeah right so in you know, that you're producing something they're producing okay you know the money or yeah that you relate to each other through the exchange of commodity okay so it's not that a commodity encapsulates the social relations that produced it it's that the active exchange is um where well, the exchange of commodities is your social relationship to them yeah but there's not really a hierarchy in exchange of these right like i felt like no i guess i guess it's not really about hierarchy in this case like if i buy a shirt that was made in vietnam um, hmm. then that is, that is my, what, what I'm buying is like maybe the exchanged commodities stand in for the relationship between me and these people, because we don't have a relationship only through the act of exchange are the products of our labor related. So then I mistake the exchange of commodities for having the relationship, or I, I mistake the commodities for having a relationship when in reality it's that we have a relationship, which is mediated through the act of it. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you know, this is actually kind of, you kind of brought it out. 
and it's kind of the the interesting side of like globe the right like i have i have all these friends in like chinese sweatshops that i wasn't aware of <laughs> <laughs> well you know they were they were sweat shirkers now you know uh in a certain not exactly what shop are there you know it's like interesting watching like how china is like kind of going they're they're looking for their lower guy you mm -hmm. know they're looking for someone they, they can exploit yeah you know they've been exploited for a while now it's like well shit we need to find someone cheaper than us you know but then uh, eventually you, you run out you know you run some i mean this is kind of i guess kind of gets into the falling rate of tendency of the rate of price that uh everything homogenized yeah yeah it's almost like any you know yeah but uh i don't I don't think that it can fully homogenize because you still get like heterogeneity within society, right? I mean, there's still, mm. there's going to be, anyway, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we both have a pretty, oh. pretty bleak outlook on the future of, of late capital. So I don't necessarily. Yeah. Well, actually what would be interesting how, uh, like if the Imperial core that collapses or falls, you know, and we're the new <laughs> exploitable workforce. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, I know, I know how to program, but if, if there's no computers in this next uh, iteration of society, I'm, I might be a farmer. Well, Mike, what's actually more interesting, you know, the list drive to reduce skilled labor to uh, unskilled labor um, so that it's easier to discipline the work, you know, how that's playing. Um, did you ever listen to that general intellect unit cast on source? Mm, no. I would, it's very interesting. One of them is, a, it's a, a lot of what they talk about is how old source, yeah, we're like revolutionary to, you know, in like fighting against, you know, the profit motive or like we're doing it for the love of it to being like a very nice and convenient uh, common capital to draw from. Yes, yeah, really good. Mm. And so coders that used that, you know, how do you call it? When everyone kind of had their own code that was from everyone else and no one when you're sharing, you know, you could, you were and had to be responsible as a coder for all of your own code. But nowadays, so much of coding is like wiring together commonly available open libraries, mm -hmm. you know, to get whatever function you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a certain amount of um, de-skilling or you don't necessarily need as many highly skilled mm -hmm. yeah. people. If you can kind of, you know, invest in, say, um, certain projects that create and maintain library, you know, like real important uh, coding functionality, um, you invest a lot in those and everyone else used them, you know, lots of cookie cutter. I mean, isn't this uh, the exact same, systems. isn't this the exact same way that technology goes where it's like, people have to do a lot of things themselves and there's a lot of manual steps and it's difficult and you know technology becomes more available i guess in this case with open source it's completely free whereas and so yeah i guess the capitalist doesn't have to then purchase tools uh to increase productivity and so there's no hmm. and people are i mean i guess the most important part is people are freely providing i mean it, it in to theory the that in theory, wouldn't it mean that people are are still skilled and then they're also more productive because they don't have to spend as much time creating libraries? Like, with creating libraries, it's not like a consumable and an expendable thing, right? Like, it's infinitely oh, yeah. reproducible, and that's a little bit different than, like, you know, uh, tech, like c traditional tools of technology. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the interesting, that's code in general is way, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because essentially there's no cost to reproduce or incredibly minimal reproductive cost initial. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, we were talking about art earlier, but, you know, say someone does graphic or digital art, aside from like copyright claim, essentially uh, intellectual property law, there's really no value. Well, does it like, does it, ha, does open source mean that code is no longer a commodity because it, it removes the exchange of code? Like we no longer buy proprietary solutions for things because there's open source versions and then all we do is like copy a bunch of code for free and if there's no exchange then it's not a commodity right whereas code used to be a commodity like that's something i go so, back and forth on is like is the code that i write a commodity like is the is the document are the documents that like managers produce a commodity it's like those are the products of labor of our respective labor but um i would guess you're closer to service servicing service pro, uh providing mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the real question, uh, or so the point they were making was, uh, I guess, twofold. One is that uh, companies like Google, like these open source projects are more and more being, there's honestly like in-house teams or, or like, so corporations are, um, what is it, react.js that mm -hmm. like Facebook yeah. um, created, but then they released open source, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think has become one of the largest, like there's been a lot of work being done around it. Yeah. So essentially, Facebook 
I mean, sure, they had to give up and they weren't necessarily the only ones using this technology, but by sharing it, they also got a bunch of free labor, um, you know, improving it and, you know, finding out novel ways um, potentially to use it that they can then use, actually have to pay for. Um, so, I mean, there, there are certain, how do you call it, work needs to be done. Like, like code takes time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, both to actually do the, the coding itself, doing the mental work required, but then also, of course, like all the work that's required to learn and stand, like, um, but it is a very a relatively like solidified cost. So long as you don't need to monetize that exact code, you know, open source is great. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's the thing. It's you get a certain division of there's certain things that are open source things that are not. Yeah, I think the value then yeah, so becomes not the code, but the data because you own the data, like customer data. Um, and the code itself is like not super important. Like for example, I could make a, a Twitter clone. Like there's a bajillion of them already floating mm -hmm. around on GitHub. I could just clone it and put it on the server and run it. But the reason that's not as valuable as Twitter is because Twitter has all the users. Twitter has all of the yeah. tweets. Um, oh yeah, well I was gonna say the people, that's the funniest thing about all the platform, the digital platforms is that, I mean essentially the people are providing the value that they, you know, in the in both network effects and value like time time yeah. spent there yeah you know they provide all the content you just like provide them a platform to put it on yeah yeah i, I mean, mean i guess your people's thoughts are model. valuable every everybody's thought has some infinitesimally small value to like twitter oh no 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 it has no well not exact the main point is is uh actually I guess the point is that their social relation through Twitter have value. Like it's not their content that matters at all. Yeah, right? yeah, that's true. It's only what it's it's only for, to Twitter. It's the the interactions between them and the fact that they're there and that they're they're scrolling. You know that their that their time is spent there and that then you can put more more ads in front of them. Okay, well, I you, know, you can. I, yeah, hmm. yeah. I mean, I agree that the relationship has value, but then how do you square that the content? is essential for the relation. Like it's a different quality, but it is without it, there can be no relationship and therefore no value. So it's still essential yeah, guess, in some, yeah, in some manner. Yeah, I guess I would just say that um, there's, no, there's no use value to the Twitter on uh, content on Twitter. I was gonna say it's important that there's I tweet. exchange value. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, well, I don't know. I mean, why, huh? What's the use? Yeah, I don't know what, what the use of Twitter is. Um, Honestly, I've never really done Twitter, so I can't, I really am not being fair at all. All right, well, cool. I feel like that covers chapter one. I don't think that there's anything mm. else that I wanted to, to bring up. Do you have any, any last yeah, thoughts I, on it before I, before I hit stop? No, 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 you can hit stop. Um, I was just, I honestly need to go back in. So I, I essentially only got through, I think, one, three, or I'm in the middle of one. I haven't, like, I went through all of chapter one before, but I definitely want to go back over commodity fetishism yeah i'm probably gonna um, reread that as well oh, that was a fun that was a fun myself, section yeah I, I enjoyed that all yeah, right i need to honestly just keep going and in, in capital finish it up 